Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Rebuild It. We are on the road again. Cue your Willie Nelson theme song. And we're on the way to get another build. This is going to be something fun for a change. And we are missing one important part of our uh, go get party that normally is with me on these trips, and that is Paul. He is on the DL. So we're hoping he has a speedy recovery. But I had to go to the bullpen and pull out the number one relief pitcher we have is Andy. Welcome so. back from semi-retirement. I haven't been, I haven't went and picked up a car with dad since we got Sarah's Mustang was the last one that you and I went and got together, which was like, I don't know, two years ago. Yeah, I remember a few things about that trip. That was in Kansas City, Missouri. So that was like a, I stopped and got you, I think, in Springfield. Like a, yeah, yeah. you showed up randomly at my house at like yeah. seven in the morning. Oh yeah. And so then we took up, took off up to Kansas City and got it. When we got there, the car was supposed to have had keys with it. And there was no keys in the car. And so we had to wait forever for Copart to search around and try to find the keys for it, which were in a little envelope somewhere in the office. That took forever. And then when we got home and opened the trunk, you remember what was in there? The head. <laughs> Which we have used in many videos since then. We use that as one of our favorite uh, little skits we did with the Halloween episode. Hey, did you hear that? I think it was a horn. It was a horn. Somebody's outside. Somebody's in the Mustang. Why would you say that? Talking in the budget budget. It's a good point. Hey, get out of that. Let's What the? Whee! Sarah still has that car, I think. Likes it. That was the one he took the chainsaw to. Yeah, the bumper went. The bumper gave me all these problems with the paint, so I ended up taking a chainsaw and destroying the bumper. That was a fun time. So this is, what we're going to get is a 2005 C6 Corvette. You know me and my white new balances, we gotta have a Corvette. So haven't had one since the ZR1. Which I will say, we bought the new balances as a joke and he has worn them pretty consistently ever since. <laughs> right now, look, I got black new balances on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> He's kicked his blinker on. <laughs> So anyway, this C6 that we're going to get is the same, you know, body style and everything as that ZR1. It was a 2010, and the one we're going to get is 2005. So this would have been the very first year of the C6 body style. And this is a core, uh, convertible, so it's not a hard top like the ZR1. I have a thing for convertibles. My wife loves them, and I really like them. And so whenever we want to go on a trip together, wife and I, we always try to take a convertible. This is a six-speed manual, and it was hit pretty hard in the left front. Like hard enough to not just destroy the fender, but also the wheelhouse, which is all glued on. You know, it's got the panel bond, everything is all glued up there, so all that's going to have to be ripped off and ground out, ground down. It's, just, it's actually glued to the frame. And this car is a non-runner. The guy that was driving it had the wreck. He had the top down. So whenever the uh, whoever came and hauled the car off, they didn't get the keys from him. So there's no keys. So we don't know if it starts or not. It looks like the engine wasn't touched, but you never know. And so that means also that this, this Corvette has been sitting in a Copart lot for we don't know how many weeks or months with no top. So we are hoping that the good old guys at Copart wrapped it really well so that the water didn't get in and ruin like the leather. It's all leather inside. Rust the, the floors out, ruin the carpet, so, destroy all the electronics, all that kind of fun stuff. So that's why it was a good deal. Andy bid on it. So I bid on it a few times against like one guy and uh, ended up winning it for I think 4800 is what, is what the final bid was. And uh, it set up for approval. 
So then I got the reserve number back and they, they sell her one at 18.5 for it, for a, for a C6 Corvette with a uh, with no key, non-runner and the roof down. They said, do you want to raise your bid? And we said, no, we're staying at 4,800. And so then like an hour later, the guy said, well, how about 5,800? <laughs> so it goes down from 18,000 to 5,800 and I took it. Which may, may or may not be a more concerning thing for our part, <laughs> but we'll have to see, I guess. Yeah. So when you look at the car on the auction, I mean, it looks really nice. From the back looks good. The, one of the exhaust pipes is bent down, which I imagine was done either with towing or with a forklift to Copart. So I'm hoping that's not any other issue underneath it. I'm hoping everything cleans up okay and that we don't have any big surprises, mainly that it starts and runs after we get a key. And it's our favorite color on the channel, yes. which is black. black. <laughs> As we do, every other car is black. Not crazy about the black, but I am crazy about the fact that it's convertible and it's a manual. So I'm really and looking forward to it. It seems like it has been forever since we have done a fun car. It seems like yeah. the last the last five projects have all been, you know, not not just everyday stuff, but not like enthusiast cars, right. which is kind of like the whole reason we started the channel was to do these fun enthusiast things. So you know, like this truck we're in now, we did. So now we have a nice truck to go get a big heavy duty truck that has no issues pulling anything, go long distances with. We're talking about going to get Corvettes, it's, it reminds me of the most sketchy car I've ever bought. Not a sketchy car, but a sketchy situation to get the car was when I went and got my dad's 
just bought the car from. Is, so it was in a long black SUV like the yeah. FBI? And we said, no, I said, we said, we just bought this car from him. He just left. So did you give him the money? The guy did. Uh -huh. Did you give him the money? Yeah, we just bought this car. Where'd he go? I don't know where he went. So the guy, the guy goes, well, I'll just wait on him. So he drives over there and he just sits in the, in the driveway, like blocking the driveway, waiting for this guy to come back. And we just were like going as fast as we could to ratchet that thing down. <laughs> and we were putting the <laughs> putting, sliding the ramps in, trying to hurry up, get turned out of there before we, we, just let, we did not, not know what's going on here. But that guy, it was obviously a guy that, that was owed money by this first guy. And I'm sure he told him that he still had to sell this car and then he'd have the money for him. And uh, we show up, give him the money, and he goes out of there with the money before the guy that he owed the money to could get there. I'm sure is what happened. Yeah. And what another part of the deal was was that this car had no top on it. Like, it didn't have a hard top, didn't have a soft top. And he said, I had the hard top. It's up in Pennsylvania getting re special company up there that redoes this little C1 for the hard times. And so dad tries to call him later on. We could never get him to answer the phone again or anything. Like, where is this top? You know, I mean, those things are super expensive. And so we find out that there's only two companies that redo hard tops, and one of them is in Pennsylvania. So we call. My dad does his, all his little, uh, he has a way with people where he can get information. He from can them. get it from anybody. <laughs> he should have been a PI, man. He would have made a killing. And so anyway, he calls around and finds a place that has this guy's top. And they're ticked off because the guy never paid them to do anything with the top. Well, and he owed them five to work on this top. Just, oh, just to work on the top. Oh, okay. And so my dad said, and so he ends up paying them 5000 bucks. They'll, they'll work on the top. And he gets the top back and get it all installed and everything. And it, that car was just so beautiful. It was probably my favorite sounding car. Sorry, even better than the than your Mustang. It just had the perfect exhaust note. It cost about eight times more than my Mustang, yeah. so that makes sense. It's a dual quad car, beautiful, just everything. Two, uh, 380 or 283 engine. The four speed man, it's just an awesome car. So, that was the one I couldn't drive because my kneecaps wouldn't get <laughs> they hit the dashboard, I couldn't get in and shut the door. Anyway, so that was my sketchiest car story forever. And I learned a lot about that about what not to do when you are buying a car. <laughs>minutes before they open we see something in the distance that could be our car well, we've never seen our vehicle pulling up it's always buried out somewhere in some crazy far away lot so it looks like there it is it does have some kind of wrap well didn't look too bad it's not horrible feel that carpet there does it does it feel wet no.
So we got a little bit of tearing right here. This whole thing on the side was open. And the big hole back there. All right, so they came and loaded the car on the trailer. The man was very upset that we were out of our trucks looking at the car already, so he told us, he yelled at us and told us to go away. And as soon as we were walking over, he grabs our car and sets it on here. I haven't even checked in yet. It's yeah, here, we've so. been here for eight minutes and he's already got the car loaded. So it looks like from just uh, looking at the car, it's got some ZR1 replica wheels from a C7. That's what those look like to me. The exhaust is hanging down a little bit, but that might just be because it's got it pulled out of the... Yeah, the yeah, the, it's pulled out of the, the mount for the hanger. You can see that hanging down right there. Oh, that's awesome. I was worried about that. Tell me how this happened. It looks like, uh, so here's our wheel well, our wheel house piece that's gonna have to be all ripped out and re-glued a new piece on here. Something sharp went through this. But look at that, it did not even hit, hopefully, the tank. That's our antifreeze tank. Hey, this isn't locked down, so. It doesn't look like there's damage on it. Yeah, it looks like the engine bay didn't even hardly get touched. The uh, intake up there still looks like it's in the right yeah. position and everything. Yeah, the battery cable's just off. And uh, remember, we do not have a key for this. Yeah, oil's good. The engine looks like it's in good shape. I don't see any, it's not shifted or moved or anything. Um, I mean, the, yeah, all it's the all hanging down. On this side are all normal. So. so we just took the uh, cover off for uh, transportation, so it didn't rip off anything inside. And there is uh, standing water in the cup holder Ooh. and a little bit of water down there in the floor mat you can see. So You know, it's going to be wet just from moisture, but I don't think there's no, any way it got enough water in there to hurt any kind of modules or anything like that underneath the seat. No, so. I think that just might be, the carpet might be a little stinky. Yeah, we'll just, I mean, we'll shampoo everything. We had to stop for fuel here. How much are we paying a gallon for gas now? $5.99. Diesel's a little pricey here on the highway. While we're doing that, I figured we'd come back here and show you guys some other stuff we found. So, <laughs> Dad opened up the center console and there is standing water. Gross! Interiors, not great, but not terrible. There's a little bit of wear there on the center console, you can see, and then with the, the water thing standing in there. Seats are probably gonna clean up pretty good. They're just dirty. Uh, Dad just popped the exhaust back on there earlier. We looked at we got an aftermarket exhaust, and the uh, it was just out of the hanger there. But they, man, look at that undercarriage. It is pretty minty fresh in there. No rust, no leaks. Looks like it's been maintained really well. SLP exhaust. So they're a good brand. I've heard of it. There's some of their stuff before. We got uh, tinted tail lights, side marker lights, ZR1 replica wheels, blacked out reflectors there. As we were pulling pieces of the car off. There. Ah, that's very nice. Perfect. So we are stopping here at a little town. Where? Where are we at? West Frankfort, Illinois. Uh, Dad found a hood on carparts.com, not to be confused with copart.com. And uh, so there's a little salvage yard here that we're gonna get this hood at, and it just needs a, a repaint. So um, it's supposed to be really good condition. So uh, 300 bucks, is that what he said? Yep, instead of buying a new one for 700 something. So they'll save me 400 bucks off the get go. So with the 51 cents that we found in the Corvette, just looking it over, we are already making our money back on this build. That's right. All right, so we just got outside of Shelby and Sons, and they had this hood, which is in great condition. It was an OEM hood, but it was just had a paint blemish, so they couldn't set, put it on a car. So they bought overstock ones from, I guess, from GM. They said they had like four or five, and they sold all of them, but this one, so. You can't even see it. Hard. You can barely kind of see it there, but it's getting repainted anyway, so it looks good and great deal. Now onward home. Alright, 
we're back at the shop. We made it back in one piece, got all the, the straps off of the vet. So now we want to try to do the sometimes the hard thing when you don't have keys to a vehicle, even though this is a manual, we can get it in neutral and roll it. But if the wheels aren't perfectly straight, we have a problem getting it off the trailer. So hopefully our wheels are straight enough, we can just roll it right off into the shop. So I'm gonna put Andy inside it and I'm gonna raise this thing up and hopefully it's got brakes. I've got one wheel scotch, so let's see how this works. So that's it for this episode, our first episode with the new C6 build, and we made it back safe and sound, so that's always a great thing. It's in the shop, so now it's time to start tearing it apart. So you got anything to say? Yep. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you liked the video, make sure you hit the like button down below and the subscribe button, and then make sure you hit the bell so you get notified of all of our videos and uploads in the future. And uh, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Adios. And always remember, don't retire it if you can rebuild it. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in and watching this week's episode of Rebuild It. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any awesome content. Have a good one.